Hi, I'm Martin Donaldson. I'm the car historian for the Tucker Automobile Club of America. This car here is Tucker number three. This car was uh, changed many hands over the years. It was uh, in the 60s. It spent its time in a museum in West Virginia. George Lucas owned this car at one time, and it's had uh, two or three owners since then. And now here we are, fully restored, ready to go home. All right, now the transmission in these cars is, uh, uh, in these early ones anyway, is basically a 36-37 Ford transmission. Tucker did develop his own transmission further down the line, but even that uh, was basically a, a modified Cord transmission based on the same principle that's uh, a vacuum electric uh, pre-select. So you select the gear first, then you depress the clutch when you let the clutch out. You should be in that gear and you should be on your way. Sounds simple enough, doesn't always work. Uh, as you can imagine, that's an overly complicated system that's <laughs> finicky at best. Power output is uh, 166 horsepower, which uh, was pretty good for its day. Suspension is very unique. The, uh, Tucker called it a torsi elastic suspension, which is basically bonded rubber in, in, uh, in cylinders that act, act, as, uh, act as springs. So kind of like Chrysler's uh, uh, um, torsion bar system, only done with rubber. And that was new technology in the 40s, obviously. That was developed by Firestone and other uh, rubber companies, Goodyear. Moderately successful, but after a few years, these cars tend to sag because the, the rubber starts to come apart and, and with the weight of the car, things, things start to give way a little bit. Okay, here we have the driver control area, as you can see, all condensed in one very uh, small area. Have your uh, very aircraft style lollipop switches up here, you got your headlight switch and parking lights and your center headlight. This one is your heater and then this one, although it's a functional switch, isn't hooked to anything, it's just there for a dummy so it can be hooked up to a, an accessory I guess. And these are just your uh, fresh air vent cables, your ignition starter button, e-brake, uh, hood release, and another dummy and your trip meter for up here and this is a lock for the hood cable to uh, stop theft I guess and your pedals down here and your dimmer switch and your instrument cluster again everything all in all in one spot zeros out at the top you got your fuel gauges oil gauges all that kind of stuff temperature gauges everything there in one spot of course, you have the, the Lincoln steering wheel, which is uh, a gift from Ford Motor Company. They were given to, to Tucker on the stipulation that they destroy them once they get their own wheels done, but alas, that wasn't to be. The company folded before that could happen, so every Tucker has a 42 Lincoln steering wheel with a, a modified horn button. And of course, up here we have our safety crash pad and pop-out safety wind, windshield in, uh, in case of an accident. This uh, windshield would, would, would pop out with a, with a sharp blow. Alright, now this is the fun part about driving a Tucker. You get to have a, a cord shifting mechanism, which is this whole cord shift stalk with the lever. So when you're driving along in second gear, just holding along, you can go ahead and select third without touching the clutch and nothing will happen until you depress the clutch and then that will allow the the shift to happen as you're releasing the clutch all the, the vacuum stuff is going to work for you and you'll notice how spartan the interior is in here with all the controls right here you got your radio which is of course your standard tube tube radio cigar knob wiper control which is also uh, vacuum operated and this would be your safety crash chamber for for passengers to to dive into if they could see a crazy speeding Buick coming towards them or something. Rather than dive through the pop-out windshield, they can dive down there for, for safety. Another part used from other cars is the 46 Plymouth rear view mirror, amongst other things. And uh, as you can see, no uh, glove compartment here, so they put it in the passenger side door. That's your, your map and glove compartment. All right, up the front, of course, we have the three headlights, which is a common, commonly known styling feature of the Tucker. Another safety deal was the uh, 
center headlight that turned with the wheels. That was a concession to Tucker's original idea. He originally wanted the, the fenders to turn with the, the wheels, but they, uh, they were reminded of Frank Lockhart's uh, uh, Blackhawk, Stutz Blackhawk crash where the fenders acted like rudders and he was killed in the crash. So. And the Tucker, because you have the engine in the back, under the hood we actually have the trunk. And on the firewall back here you have the, the data plate that gives all the pertinent information to this car. On Tucker's the serial number didn't always match the body number. Some are, some are different but this one, this one matches. Paint number is 600, which means maroon. 940 is uh, tan interior. Now, another little story about the hood ornament. That's uh, also related to uh, Indianapolis with uh, Tucker's time there with Harry Miller and Henry Ford. So that's basically what this hood ornament represents, is a, a rare engine Indy race car with a torpedo body, cockpit for the driver, and the six tailpipes. Indy race car for a hood ornament. Pretty cool. So there you have it. A little rundown on Tucker cars and what makes them tick. If you want to find out more about these great cars, the Tucker Club of America is a great organization. Uh, TuckerClub.org. We have a Facebook page and message board and all that good stuff. You can find out anything you want to know about these cars. And please join the club too.